Hey guys, Chris from Adapt Tuition here, and in this video, I'm going to show you the solution for question 2 from the Jan 2022 PUA Paper 2. If you want to see the solutions for the other questions on this paper, I'm going to put a card up there and the link in the description below. So be sure to check those out if you need to see them. And with that said, let's get into the question. Okay, so 2A part 1 asks us a very basic but very important question. State the purpose of accounting. Well, boy. <laughs> So I put a very simple solution, simple answer, because this was only one mark. I have that the purpose of accounting is to provide the financial information of an entity in such a way so that it is useful in analysis and decision making. Now that is not the only correct articulation of that, of the answer to this question. If you guys have different articulations, different ways of stating it, I would encourage you to put your version in the comment section below and we can see which one we all like because there are different ways you could put that and of course no one no one way is the correct way okay let's take a look at the second part okay so it says to list two duties of an accountant and again this is kind of subject to interpretation because different texts will t give you different lists you can google this as well and you'll get different answers from different websites but this is what i have the duties of an accountant include and i gave you more than two because i want you to have more than just two at your disposal the first one I put is setting up, maintaining, and at least using a system to capture or record all financial information. So an accountant is responsible for recording the financial information of an entity. So if it's a new entity, the accountant should know what systems to use to record or capture, as I put there, the financial information. The accountant should also be able to maintain that system. What I mean by maintain is that make adjustments to record new types of information as the entity evolves or as the needs of the, the reporting needs of the entity evolves as well. Now, if the accountant is joining an existing organization and there is already a system in place, they should be, like I said here, able to at least use the in-place system, right? But of course, they should be able to make suggestions for improvements as time goes by. Next, I have ensuring the accuracy of the accounting information captured by the accounting system. Right. So to me, it's not just enough to have a system and be able to use it. You have to know that it's working correctly. You don't want to come to the end of the reporting period and have to compile your information for your income statement and balance sheet and realize, hey, my balance sheet isn't balancing. Where is the error for this? Now, of course, we have a whole topic called error correction and suspense accounts, and we have control systems that should be built in to the accounting process. And of course, the accountant is responsible for that as part of the setting up, as I mentioned in the previous point. But again, you need to know little tricks and where things could go wrong because that's just the nature of things. Things go wrong, things don't balance, and you need to know how and where to look for those errors. Okay, next, preparing financial statements in keeping with laws and the relevant accounting standards, right? So this is important, right? We know now at the, at the CSEC level, we don't know too much about accounting standards apart from the fact that they are basically accounting law. That's what accountants have to follow when they are doing, executing their duties and especially preparing financial statements. So the accountant, of course, needs to be familiar with those standards. And in some, in different countries, sometimes different standards may apply. What might apply in the United States might not apply in the UK. What might apply in Australia might not apply in Trinidad. So you need to know the differences in the standards, the subtle differences wherever you are and be able to adapt. <laughs> okay. Uh, next, we have preparing budgets and financial reports for managers or directors and advising them on financial matters. So yes, so part of an accountant's job is not just to record information and compile it, but you have to present it because Information is not just captured and recorded as its own end. We use the information to make decisions. We analyze the trends in the data. We look to see, are we getting better? Are we getting worse? Are things going according to plan? And we make decisions to fix our trajectory. If we're going down in terms of like, let's say revenues or profits, how do we fix that? If we're going up in terms of costs and expenses, how do we fix that? Is it fixable? Do we need to get out of the industry? Do we need to shut down and liquidate? Or is it possible to turn things around, right? These are questions you have to ask and you need information to answer them. So the accountant is responsible for, for preparing, sorry, this, the reports and the budgets and advising the directors or managers on how best to achieve the different goals that they might set out to achieve. Okay, next, 
We are ensuring that the entity for which they work is compliant with all relevant taxation laws and financial and reporting regulations. Right, so again, in different countries, you have different laws. Some might be the same, some might be different. Taxation laws have to do with compulsory payments to the government, paying them tax. You have, in, in Trinidad, you have to pay tax every quarter, the 31st of March, 30th of June, 30th of September, and the 31st of December. So you need to make your payments on time and well, hopefully in full or according to whatever estimates you, you may have to make. So you need to, of course, comply with those things. And uh, 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 I mean, I only know in Trinidad, you, of course, have to pay your employees tax on their behalf. It's, I think it's called withholding tax. Make contributions to the national insurance scheme for your employees based on the level of their pay. Um, and of course, financial and reporting regulations Public limited companies need to produce financial statements and publish them in papers and other places on an annual basis and have them audited. So you need to know all of these things and be sure that your company, the entity for which you're working, is doing them. And the last one I have is continually staying up to date with changes in accounting standards and practices. Right. So things don't always stay the same. As time goes by, accounting standards can change based on feedback from accountants. Remember, accountants are the people who use these accounting standards. And if they think, hey, well, this one is a little too, it's, it's too strict, we need some flexibility, or this one is, is too open to interpretation and there's too much leeway in it, we need to tighten it up, right? These things are communicated to the IASB, International Accounting Standards Board, and they have their own process of reviewing these things and amending them. If you go up to Form 6 in Unit 1, Module 1, you learn about those things a bit more. Okay, so if you guys have any other duties that you have a different articulation for, please feel free to leave them in the comments section below. Again, I don't know everything and I am very much willing to learn from you guys as much as I teach, right? Because you guys sometimes know things I don't. So we could all learn from each other. So leave anything extra in the comment section below and I'll take a look at it. Okay, let's check out the next part of the question. All right, so it says that the following table identifies four ethical principles of accounting, which are labeled A to D. So we have letters A, B, C, D, ethical principles of accounting, professional competency and due care, professional behavior, confidentiality, objectivity. And it says here, complete the table below by writing the letter A, B, C, O, D, which best represents the ethical principle reflected in each statement. So I've recreated the information down here in my Excel. So the first thing says accountants must not allow bias, conflict of interest, or the undue influence of others to override their professional and business judgments. So to me, that's item D, which is objectivity. Next, accountants must not use in accounting information for their personal advantage or the advantage of other parties. That's confidentiality, which is C. Next, we have to exercise sound judgment. Accountants must stay abreast with relevant laws, regulations, and technical standards. That's definitely A, which is professional competency and due care. And finally, accountants must comply with relevant laws and regulations and avoid any action that discredits the profession. That's professional behavior B. All right. So, of course, if you disagree with any of those, please feel free to let me know in the comment section below and we can get a discussion going. Like I said, I don't always know everything and sometimes people interpret things a bit differently based on what they've learned or how they've learned it. All right, let's take a look at the next part of this question. Okay, so part B starts off. Define the term statutory deduction. All right, so a statutory deduction is a deduction from employees' earnings that is mandated by the government of a country. In other words, it is law. So some examples include income tax or PAYE, national insurance contributions, social security contributions, and in Trinidad, there's something called health surcharge, which is an, a compulsory deduction, a weekly charge uh, that is used to finance the public healthcare system. So if you guys know of any other statutory deductions from maybe Trinidad or your country, if you're watching from a different country, hi, by the way, thanks for watching. Uh, please leave it in the comment section below and we can get a discussion going and share knowledge so that everybody can learn from everybody else. All right, let's take a look at the final part of this question. So it says that James Bolo is a machine operator at Zimbo Construction Company. The following is Mr. Bolo's information for the year ended 31st December 2021. So we have annual salary of 80,000. Then we have personal allowance of 18,000. Income tax rate is 20, oops, sorry. Income tax rate is 20%. Then we have some deductions. We have national insurance, 5% of gross pay, 
pension plan contribution, 4% after tax income, contribution to health scheme, a flat fee of 600, contribution to savings scheme, a flat, a flat fee of $1,000. Now, what do they want us to do? The first thing I'm seeing here, it says calculate James Bolo's taxable pay for the year ended 31st December 2021, show all working clearly for three months. So taxable pay is the pay or the earnings on which tax is chargeable. So as you can see here, there's, a, there's an annual salary and a personal allowance. The allowance is also called a tax-free allowance or tax-free income. That's income on which no tax is charged. So all we have to do is start with the annual salary minus the personal allowance, and you have taxable pay of $62,000. And that is the figure on which you will find tax. You'll find 20% of that. Okay, let's take a look at the next part of the question. So it says, calculate James Bolo's net pay for the year ended 31st December 2021. Show all working clearly. So we have a nice little table down here. It's for nine marks. So let's jump into this working, shall we? All right, so remember that net pay is the pay that the employee gets to take home. So your the annual salary, and you're going to have to minus all deductions, your income tax, and all four deductions down here. So the first thing we're going to start with is the annual salary of 80000 Next, what we're going to do is we're going to take out tax. Now, income tax is 20% of 62000 Why 62? Why not 80? Because remember, we had a tax-free allowance of $18,000. So in the previous weekend, that's what we had to find, taxable pay. So we find 20% of the 62, which is 80 minus 18. That turns out to be 12400 now, thereafter, we have national insurance, 5% of gross pay. So we're going to have to find 5% of the 80,000, which is 4,000. Now we have pension plan contribution, 4% of after-tax income, right? So that one is a little tricky. So you're going to see here, 4% of 80,000 minus 12,400. Now, why am I doing 80,000 minus 12,400? Because it's said across here, 4% after income tax. After income tax means you're going to take away the income tax, the 12,004, from your gross salary. 80,000 minus 12,004 will give us, I think, 67,6, and we find 4% of that figure. Continuing on, we have contribution to health scheme and contribution to saving scheme of 600 and 1,000, respectively. So we put those in across here. We total up to get 20704 and we simply subtract that figure from the 80000 above to get net pay of 59296 Okay guys, so there you have it. That's the solution for question 2 from the Jan 2022 PUA Paper 2. If you have any further questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. If you want to check out any more videos, I'm going to put some cards up here. Don't forget to subscribe and check out my website for some free PUA handouts you might find useful. Okay, guys, so as per usual, thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you next time. Bye.